No one will show it late night. You know what it is? Ah, nothing but illustrious guests. And tonight we have a New York sports legend. Yes, who better than to send off this show than the legendary, the Pope himself. You know what it is. Mike Francesco, ladies and gentlemen. First time, long time, Mike, come to the table. Yeah. Mike is here. Get news harder than getting Obama on the show. Well, oh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> Although Bill Simmons did send me quite a few emails saying you gotta do my guy's show. Is that what? How do you hear? Yeah, he's the one who finally he was haunting me, and Bill and I are very <laughs> close. Bill. And he said these are my guys. You have to go do. And he said it would imp improve my street, street cred. But it I would. Said, you know what? I haven't really tried to do that in a long time. So no, you got street cred now. Yeah, you know, like, you know, I've been doing it so long. I don't even need street cred. <laughs> yeah, you, know no, you are street cred. Low key, <laughs> us and Bill Simmons, we brought you out of retirement because yeah. there was that uh, Yankee Red Sox fight earlier this season. Yes. And we said the next day, we was like, don't you miss hearing Mike Mike's Francesco. take on this. That's right. His take on it. Yeah. That's exactly what right. What were you doing under retirement? Were you, was it eating at you that... Yes. Yeah, you couldn't get to... All right, Especially when I heard so much stupid stuff being said about it. Uh -huh. People yeah. had no idea what a Boston Yankee fight was really about. Exactly. You know what? You got to go through the... They had people on the wrong teams when they were recounting the fights. Mm -hmm. I mean, you got to yeah. remember. Yeah. You know, you got to remember when, you know, Lou Pinella slid into Carlton Fisk right. yeah. and kicked up his spike, yeah. and then they went. And then, and then Otto Velez, you guys old enough, you guys are too old, you guys are too young to remember Otto Velez. Otto Velez was a guy on the Yankee bench, strong guy played, you know, was kind of a backup first baseman, pinch hit, right-handed mm -hmm. hitter. He wiped out half the Red Sox team. He was taking guys right and left. And he's knocking guys out all over the place. I mean, he was killing guys, and he was legendary in that fight. And they had some real serious injuries in that yeah, fight. Bill Lee got fights. hurt in that fight. Those, those were nasty. You know, Yankee Red Sox fight needs a little blood, yeah. needs a little toughness. Somebody's yeah. got to get hurt. Somebody's got to get hurt. That's so exactly right. Real. Do you feel the rivalry is back? Yeah, yeah, I do. Because first of all, they're both good. Right. So your first thing that has to happen is they have to be playing for something. When they right. had the wild card set up where you didn't care if you were the division winner at a wild card. Mm -hmm. It was awful right. because no one cared. Right. There was no advantage. Now they care. Mm -hmm. So when they show up tomorrow night and now they're going to kick it off. They're both good. Right. They're both going to win close to 100 games. Yeah. They're both going to make the playoffs, but mm -hmm. neither wants to be in a one game wild card. So they mm -hmm. want to win this division. So you're going to see it. It's going to start to ratchet up. Tomorrow night, if you're a sports fan, you have to be there tomorrow night. There's oh, nothing man. better. Hot night, Friday Yankee night. Stadium, yep. sold out building. Uh -huh. Red Side you Yankees. can hear the chance 40 minutes before the game starts. Yep. Okay? Woo. Building will be full yep. and it'll be like an old time Yankee game where it'll rock. Oh, Stadium yep. will rock. We're in the parking lot drinking 22s a bunch. You're both Bronx guys, right? Yeah, both born and, raised. born and raised. So tell me, how do you get in this crazy business? I just, looked into it, yeah. basically. Just, we were on, you know what? We actually were on Twitter. People got recognized off of Twitter, okay. which you recently joined. Right, I did. You know, it's part of this app I'm, I'm, I'm doing with, I came back really with the app. Mm -hmm. And then when I sold the app and have a partner, CA was a partner, and I never, ha I w always represented myself. So mm -hmm. I didn't have any agents. So I met with CA and, about something, and they said, well, we wanted to be in on the app. So they became my partner, and then Intercom came in as a partner because I thought we needed a broadcast partner, and that's when the talk started, since Intercom now owns FAN, mm -hmm. about me coming back. Right. So it was like, we talked about it, we kicked it around a little bit, and then next thing you know, it happened. So, so now, now, now we're back. But that's actually you tweeting. Yeah, yeah. well, that, and, and part of it was, we made a deal that'll happen, because the app's gonna start in late August. We made a deal with Twitter for some things we needed, and mm -hmm. what Twitter wanted was for me to have an account. Right. Yeah. I'm really like Twitter on training wheels right now. Right. Because all I do is send out a couple of tweets. I don't know how to retweet. I don't have to do pictures. Right. I haven't You're learned that stuff yet. I'm dumb in hell when you, it comes to that stuff. You're learning it. You got this iconic tweet. Yeah, yeah. Long time coming, first time tweeting. Don't, don't waste, waste my, my time with dumb stuff. stuff. Well, that's about it. That's yeah. a good one. Yeah. Good. <laughs> Are people wasting your time with dumb stuff? Oh, I don't read the comments. I don't know. Oh, so smart that's man. It. Smart <laughs> man. Okay, on Twitter, you don't read the comments. I don't. I don't. When people call in right. and they come out with the most ridiculous, ridiculous trades, yeah, right. how, do you, how do you stay professional? I don't. Like I, almost I, don't. I hang up on them. <laughs> I don't. Or I say, why did I have to be your one call? Okay? <laughs> I mean, whether they were in jail or in some nut house, why did I have to be their one call? What's I the mean, most ridiculous trade you've heard lately? Oh, it, it, just turn on, the, turn on the radio any minute. You yeah. hear a hundred of them because everybody, here it is. The Yankee fans who want to be, they want an all-star at every position. Yeah, okay? Now, what does the Yankees want expect. right now? What does everybody want? They want a pitcher. The they want pitching. a starting pitcher. Yeah. No, they don't want a starting pitcher. They want DeGrom. Ah, okay? Right. The Mets stink. 
right? Now, the Mets have a jewel there yes. in the ground. Now, they don't want to give him up. Mm -hmm. And the last thing they want to do is give him to the Yankees. Yankees. Of course not. And if they wanted to do that, who do they have their eye on? Torres. Torres. Mm -hmm. yep. Yankees wouldn't trade Torres at, at gunpoint, no. okay? No. We know that. So, okay, <laughs> now, I don't even know if they want to trade Andohar anymore. Mm, but no, they're not trading Torres. They're not. But the Yankee fans, they don't want a pitcher. You know, they didn't want a washed up guy who's 35. They don't want you Cole Hamels. They want DeGrom. Yes. They want to stick DeGrom right at the Astros, okay? Yep. Yeah. They want to put him on the mound. Mm -hmm. Severino, DeGrom, let's nice. wrap this thing up, How you okay? About German? That's it, German. what? How are you feeling about German? Is, is he coming I, into his own? I don't think, I don't think he's going to be a guy who gets a start Rotation in the postseason. No, no. I, the, the only guy that I trust right now, as far as what they have, Severino's a start. Mm -hmm. Okay, I trust Tanaka in the playoffs. You do? Yes, he reminds me a little bit of, he's got that little bit of El Duque. He might oh. not be great in the regular season, but I really have been impressed. Last year when he took the ball in the playoffs, he was big. Mm -hmm. So I trust him. Right. I trust him if he's healthy. I don't trust Gray. I don't trust CeCe in the playoffs. I just don't think I can trust. He's got the guts of a burglar. He's a great ex-pitcher. I just don't oh. know if he's got enough I, left yet. I've never heard that phrase before. You know? The guts of a burglar. He does. Yeah. Yeah. But, this is, this but, is why you're the Pope, man. Yeah. Yeah. Guy, you know, with the this is why you're the Pope. Listen, I almost called him last week and said, Jacoby Ellsbury for Bartolo Colon straight up. All right, please. Hang up, I'll hang please, up and listen. Please, I would please. hang up on you. Okay? <laughs> Who the hell would ever trade for Jacoby Ellsbury? They owe him $60 million. He doesn't play. <laughs> he gets 21 this year, 21 next year, 21 the year after. Don't you want up. a deal like that? Yeah, I love it. And then five, to, five oh, with man. parting gifts the year after that to give you Samsonite luggage and five million to go. Uh. He's got $66 million coming to him. I don't, uh. I don't understand it. Well, it's a bad deal. Uh, the, hey, you know, but the Yankees can hide that much money under the mat. Oh, yeah. Okay? The Mets, they can't. No, See, they can't. It, that's the difference. The Yankees can eat their mistakes. Mm -hmm. That's what you need to be able to do. Red Sox, Yankees, Dodgers, they can eat their mistakes. Right. Yeah. They make a $20 million mistake, and eh, put it over here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah right to him. Hey, okay, perfect example. Perfect example. Okay? Yeah. I mean, perfect example. So, or, you know, any guy, you know, you get a guy like, you sign a guy for $50 million, never pitches, well, you just put him over here. Mm -hmm. But... So they have a guy who they thought was going to be a good player. ellsbury has been a bust. He's been a terrible yeah. player for him. And now he's... I haven't even seen him on, oh, on now, the field. Now he's like a hood ornament. I, mean, yeah. Yeah, 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 come on, come I on. thought he was a third base coach. Yeah, yeah, you know what? You might as well give him a chance. You know, <laughs> he's at least making a buck then. You know, yeah. Yeah. Or make him a groundskeeper. Whatever. You know, like, make him, oh, make him $21 million. Make him do something. You went off on the Giants when they benched Eli last year. Oh, yeah. what a dumb... Well, look, where's the coach now? It was a gutless move. It was a gutless move. Where is the coach now? There's somewhere. And, I don't know, Logan well, Challenge. Where's and, Eli? Yeah. Getting ready to now throw it to a bunch of really good guys. Yeah. You watch. Right. The Giants will be back this year. Their over under number is six. Mm -hmm. Run. Don't walk. Run and bet the over. They will, they will absolutely, right there. <laughs> absolutely. They have a tough schedule, but they will be back. Look, look at it this way. In the NFL, what you want to do is have an offense where you can create a mismatch. Yeah. A mismatch. Mm -hmm. The Giants have three guys that on any play can create a mismatch. Their tight end can. Mm -hmm. Now they got a back who can mm -hmm. in Barkley. Yep. And they have Beckham, who mm -hmm. hopefully wants to play this year. I think he might want to be motivated to play. Mm -hmm. Those three guys can create mismatches all over the field. Now go back to doing what Eli does well, which is throw the deep ball. Right. That's right. what he does. Eli stays healthy, and he throws the deep ball. It, they're going to have a big year. That's it. Big That's year. what I'm saying. I'm like, he's like, Are it's you a Giant cool. fan or a Jet yeah, fan? Giant fan. Both Giant fans. Yeah, I can't. Both I can't. Yankee fans. Both Yankee fans. Yeah. Still Yankees, Knicks fans or no? No, no, no. Wait, you, you, guys, you guys left the Knicks long Knicks ago, and you have teams somewhere in the league. <laughs> Who's your guy in the league? Who's your NBA guy? My, like, the one, one Who's guy? Who's your guy? One guy? That's it. It's, Le it's LeBron. It's You're still a LeBron guy. Who's your guy? What? Chris Stapps. Okay. Listen, it, really? I'm Knicks, I'm Knicks to the end. Really? I am Knicks to the end. That's like, your guy? That's my guy. I, listen, I live and die with the Knicks, and if that's the well, best But you've been dying for a long time. I've been dying time. for a while. Yeah. Like, for a while. Fact, you're dead. Mike. Mike. <laughs> that's why I listen to you. I'm like, I'm Mike. I'm going to be right. honest with you. I'm a LeBron guy because I just want LeBron to surpass Jordan. He, no, as a kid, uh, listen, as a kid watching Knicks, watching the Knicks lose to Jordan every year as a child, imagine how heartbreaking that is. See, you know? first of all, you can't compare. They're different. Mm -hmm. One guy, to me, he's more like Magic one, than Jordan. Uh, one guy is the most versatile player who's ever played. Mm -hmm. He's bigger and stronger than everybody. He plays four positions. Jordan was more like Kobe. He's a quintessential two guard. He played a position. Scotty had his roles. The rebounder, whether it was Grant or Rodman, had his roles. Mm -hmm. 
And you had your little shooters who, if they doubled the triple Jordan, he'd kick it to Paxson, kick it to B.J. Armstrong, yeah. okay, kick it to Kerr, and they better make it, otherwise they got the stare. I right. Mean, yeah. So, you know, yeah, 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 so you got, got and you never got the ball again. Yeah, exactly. Hey, I'm telling you. you hey, out. I used to sit right there, same seat all the time. For, I loved going to those old Nick Bull games. Mm -hmm. and I used to sit third seat from underneath the basket was my seat every game. I used to sit in the same seat, uh, and here was the visitor bench. Jordan used to come down the court and yell over to Phil and go, Phil, this guy hadn't done blah, blah, blah in five minutes. Get him off the court. And then substitution. That was <laughs> it. <laughs> I read the book, The Jordan Rules, and it says that he would literally go to the scorer's table and say, hey, how many more assists do I need for a triple-double? Or how many more assists? I'm surprised he was that much of a number guy because he could do whatever he wanted. Yeah. I mean, here's what he was. He had more of a will to win than any... The, he's the fiercest competitor. He intimidated the officials, mm -hmm. the owners, the the vendors, the cheerleaders, he intimidated <laughs> everybody in the building. No, no one does that. Right. Even LeBron doesn't do that. They don't intimidate. Like, I tell you right now, the call that they changed, okay, that yeah. changed the series, they ch the worst call in the world going to the videotape and changing that from a charge oh, into a block. Oh, they would have never done that to Michael Jordan. That official wouldn't have had the guts to do that exactly. to Michael Jordan. Oh, he man. wouldn't have got out of the building. Yeah, no, Michael yeah, would have been Jordan waiting for him at the team bus. He would have been waiting for him at the table. <laughs> oh. Real. He You're intimidated going... people better than anybody. <laughs> How does You're going into the Broadcasters Hall of Fame. The yeah. National, National Radio, Radio Hall, of Fame. Hall of Fame. I just found a couple of days ago. Yes. How does that feel? Yeah. Thank you. Well deserved. Thank you. Your what first ballot? Thank what you. does it mean? How does it feel? I wasn't first ballot. I made the finals last year and didn't get in. So as a oh, second ballot. Wow. Oh, That's so you're are you going to TO it and not show up? I'm mad now. I'm mad. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> hey, I'm in the Hall of Fame. I'm, wait, listen, when they get you in the Hall of Fame, you go, okay? Right. First year as a finalist, mm -hmm. I didn't get in. What are you going to do? Second year, I got in. Can. That's it. So I'm going. Okay. Going. No TO. No, no TO. I'm How not. Do you feel listen, TO was in my studio a month ago. He's just looking for publicity. He'll show up. Yeah. I think what it's about is he offered someone up for his induction. And they didn't want. That's what uh, I think. Because you, oh. you have to clear the guy who's going to introduce you. Right. Oh, okay. okay, at a Hall of Fame. You have to tell him. Because I already said, you know, you, they ask you who your guy's going to be. Mm -hmm. Okay? I think T.O. wanted someone that they weren't happy with. I think that's right. what the fight is behind the scenes. He's like, he wanted Romo. Oh, he probably wanted some crazy guy. I mean, <laughs> that, you know, he probably wanted someone the NFL can't stand. Yeah, right, you know? Right. That's it. Mike, what's the deal with the Diet Cokes? Is it your favorite? Is, it is that your favorite? Yeah, right. they have hey, look, I switched right, over. Right, look, right, I switched right. over from Diet. I, I would put on a couple. Of, Listen, uh, my wife wouldn't let me drink Coke. She, then there's no way. So she, oh. it's big on the sugar. So, but she doesn't like me to drink Diet Coke either. But I don't drink coffee. Right. I never drank a coffee in my life. Never drink coffee. Coke Zero is terrible. Oh, it it's is, awful. It's God, it's, it's awful. It's terrible. It's, it's what bad as Tab. You ever have Tab? Oh, wow. Oh, oh, tab oh, is like paint. I mean, I mean. I started drinking Diet Coke, and it's just became a thing. And you know, <laughs> I've never done a co Diet Coke commercial in my life. You know that? You might as well. I mean, Hello, I mean, Coca Cola. Cola. And, uh, You're dropping the and, ball and here. People come when I do Francesca Con. People come dressed as Diet Coke in. Francesca Con. <laughs> tell us more about. <laughs> you know. Tell for those who do not know what Francesca Con. Well, they have an event every year where every person comes dressed like me. So there's like a <laughs> thousand of them. I wear these steth stethoscope uh, headsets that they wear, mm -hmm. and they make their hair gray like mm -hmm. mine, and they, you know, put on the shirt that I always button to the top, mm -hmm. and they, all this stupid stuff. Or they come like Coke cans, or dress like the Pope, or whatever it is. Oh. And we get a couple of thousand people in the building, and that's it. We do it, we do it every year. It's wonderful. That's it. Speaking of, uh, you know, being a New York guy, right. how does it feel to be accepted? Because we came out, we came on the scene, and it was, they were, oh, they're too New York, they're too New York-centric. As a guy who has a very distinct right. New York accent, how did you overcome well, that? Well, I'll tell you, it was, it was an issue because when I... Well, here's the deal, though. I started on network television mm -hmm. before I was ever on local radio. Right. When I was on network television, I got creamed around the country for yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Oh, this guy's too New York. And, and they said to me... First thing they said to me when I got the job was, we think you should change your name, mm -hmm. to, you know, to a more generic name. I said, no Mike chance. Mike Fran or something? I'm not like changing that. my name. <laughs> said, Mike said, Fran. Listen, this is my only name I got, so this right. is it, okay? Yeah. And, and I, didn't, I didn't do it to protect my father, because my father left when I was six, never saw him again. So, but, mm. um, but my last name's Francesca, so that's it. That's my name. So I wasn't changing it. Secondly, I never tried to hide the fact that I was a New York guy, so I always kind of took it as being a little defiant. I was a little brash, you yeah. know? So <laughs> I played it up that way, and then when the fans started, and I started doing that, that became a positive, not a negative. Mm -hmm. So then 
I became like the New York guy, and yeah. that was it. But I did I did network television for 13 years for CBS, you know, NCAA tournament, basketball, football, all that stuff. Around the country, they'd write, oh, this guy's too New York and all that <laughs> stuff all the time. But I never paid attention. Screw him. Never, but that's it. Yeah. They now don't you're like the Hall it of tough. Fame. Hey, you know what? If they don't like it, tough. Yeah. You know what? I'd rather own New York than own the whole country. Uh -huh. I'd that's, rather, a fact. I, that's That's what I feel. I've always felt that. I'd rather have New York. I'd rather have my role in New York than have anything in the whole country. It's the greatest city in the world. Nothing like can't it. Tell. Nothing like it. Yeah, right. And the Bronx isn't bad either, you know that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, man. We out here. <laughs> How old were you when you gave your first uh, sports rant? And what was it about? Well, you know, when I got to the fan, believe it or not, I got into business. When I, my first job, I was, uh, I came, got out of college. My first job I got, I was editing a football magazine. Uh -huh. And then I started writing a football book with a guy named Pete Helksham, who was a famous NFL guy. And I did the book with him. And a guy named John Walsh, who worked for ESPN, was the guy who edited the book. They had a magazine called Inside Sports Magazine. Some uh -huh. of you folks might remember that. It's before your time. And they went against Sports Illustrated, didn't make it, OK? Right. So what happened was I used to have to go do interviews to promote the book. So I started going and doing these radio shows. When I'd go and do the radio show, I'd say to myself, man, I am so much better than this guy doing the radio <laughs> show. I think I could do this better than him. Right. So I kept that in the back of my mind. And when it, FAN started, I asked them for a job. Problem was, they said to me, we're bringing in guys from all over the country. You have a good job at CBS, but what we're gonna do here at the fan is we're gonna bring in the biggest guys. They brought in Pete Franklin, who was a big sportscaster from, uh, from Cleveland. Uh -huh. They brought in Jim Lampley. They brought in Brian, uh, Greg Gumbel. They brought in all the different people all from outside New York, mm -hmm. and the fan tanked unbelievably. It was about to go out of business. It mm -hmm. was because it was all non-New York guys mm -hmm. talking about anything but New York sports. Right. Finally, the light went on. They got I Must Do the Morning, mm -hmm. and they started looking for New York guys. They found me, then they found this crazy, wacky guy named Mad Dog, mm -hmm. put us together. Next thing you know, we were the number one station in America. Mm -hmm. That's How it. did that we, work you know, initially? Like, did you Dog and I hate each other. We right. couldn't stand each other. We, I, I don't know how you guys got, when you got together. Were you good friends when you got together? Dog and I hardly knew each other. Okay. They put us together, and we both wanted to work alone. We oh, both wow. thought we should be better alone. See, Dog and I, the reason I think we worked so well together was we were two guys who worked together for 20 years and both believed that we were going to be much better alone than we were together. So we were always out to get each other. So right. we had this crazy, crazy combative chemistry that worked. Right. And it worked great because we were always edgy. Mm -hmm. We were always fighting. We were always trying to one-up each other. Mm -hmm. and. But we also learned how to have a little timing and have some fun and do Ooh, some cool. bits and everything. Street, yeah. And next thing you know, Mike and Amelia became, you know, mm -hmm. an, an Necessary a, a nest, yeah. an amazing hit. I mean, we went like this. We went in nine months, Dog and I went from just starting and people saying it won't last to we were the kings of the town mm -hmm. in nine months. We were number one in the ratings. You know, all of a sudden we were like, it was Imus and Howard and us. And like, that, we got in that same level like that and we stayed there for 20 years. And, you know, then he uh, left, and he went in the witness protection program, and I haven't heard from him. I, I, I haven't heard from him I mean, since. Uh, you, know, yeah. you know, I kept the fan, and he left, and then, you know, I don't know what happened to him. This is a safe space. You don't have to be humble. You know, you don't have to be humble. You can uh, admit the fact that you kind of set the blueprint for that. You know what I'm saying? With you and Mike. You know no, 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 listen, we both had our roles and we did them really well. It was a great show mm -hmm. and he had great timing. He was good at what he did. He's a good talk show host. Mm -hmm. He really is. Uh, and we each are our individuals and we've gone on, done our own thing since. He has a good, you know, successful show on Sirius. And I've stayed and taken care of the fan and That's it's worked great. out great for both of us. Is he ever going to see another Mets championship in his life? Him? Mm -hmm. eh, I don't know if any of us will. No, seriously. <laughs> And maybe there's someone young enough here who might. <laughs> Any children in the audience? What about the Knicks? Uh, what about the Knicks? Anybody younger see... than five in the audience? <laughs> are, the Knicks, are we going to see a Knicks championship? Uh, or at least now you're getting into those that haven't been born yet. Oh, okay? wow. <laughs> wow, right. <laughs> nice. Okay? I'm... I will never be on the earth for one of those. Oh, I'm telling you. I'll tell you. I, I... That. I'm telling you. You're looking. Like, China talks about they'll get us in, like, 2030, 2040. Mm -hmm. it, maybe the Knicks will be good by then. I mean, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I am of the mind, though, that all it takes is just ownership change. Because I don't think Dolan's it's the not, owner. I'm telling you right now, it's not. I, it, I'm going to read my lips. This is not Dolan's fault. Dolan, first of all, people say, oh, he interferes. He doesn't interfere. And he doesn't want to know anything about basketball. Dolan considers himself a music guy. Right, he does, he does. He, has, he opens for the Eagles. Mm -hmm. Did you, okay, oh I've God. heard his group. Were you there when he opened for the Eagles? No, I was not there, oh but I have actually, God. I have actually been 
at an event where his, he has performed. Mm -hmm. So I've heard him perform. I actually know him pretty well. So I, I've heard him perform. He's, he's not bad. He's not great, <laughs> but he's not bad. Okay? His Less band is reason. better than him. <laughs> I'm being honest. Be honest. They're like an eight. He's like a five. Okay? I'm being honest. I'm being honest. honest. But you know, he's a billionaire, so hell, he could be a five all he wants. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so he's, you know, he's got better equipment than the Rolling Stones. Yeah. He's yeah. got a better bus. He's mm -hmm. got a better plane. Yeah. And he's got a bigger house. Well, so got, that's yeah. basically it. But got he's got enough. very good musicians around him. Yeah, so that's what he did. He went and found people who were better than him, which was smart. Because if yeah. they were all worse than him, it'd be a bad band. Yeah. I mean, that'd be the yeah. problem. But he likes to sing. He's okay. He's not great. All right. I mean, he's not going to knock the Eagles off the charts. Right. I mean, we know that. So, but he opens for the Eagles, which is not a bad deal. He hangs around with rock stars. So that's what he's more concerned That's his about. love. Right. That's his thing. And he and he is a very smart businessman. He's, he's opened a lot of very successful buildings. Mm -hmm. He's opening one now in Vegas, a music hall. Mm -hmm. He had he opened a place in L.A. He's got a great one there opening in Vegas. It's going to be unbelievable. Twenty thousand seat music mm -hmm. emporium in Vegas. It's going to be it's called the MSG Sphere. It's mm -hmm. going to be unbelievable. But he left. Listen, he brought Phil Jackson in. He gave him a ton of money. He gave him carte blanche, and Phil basically decided to put his feet up and retire. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's really what happened. That's, yeah. I mean, and, and he I, basically I, stole sixty million dollars. Yeah, what he did. He did, yeah. he did. Mean, honestly, without a mask, without a gun, he stole sixty yeah. million dollars. I mean, as a Knicks fan, you know we always have that initial hope of like, yeah. oh, this is going to work. Hey, they gave him a standing ovation the night he got there. Yeah. Yeah. And he thought I got the right guy. With the guy who runs the Eagles, Irving Azoff, is the mm -hmm. guy who set it up. He set up the deal because he's close to uh, Jackson and he's close to Dolan. Oh. So he set up the deal. He's the deal maker. Okay. They made the deal, but Phil didn't bring anything to the deal. He made a bad, no. you know, he, did, he didn't do a good job. This he made some is... bad signings. He did oh, a bad oh, job. Talk, 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 oh, talk about it. Talk about uh, it. Oh, please. Uh, Stephen A. Smith has a very oh. famous quote oh. who is, uh, uh, I don't know if we can pull it up, This the uh, Lamar Odom signing. Oh, let, it can get worse than that. How about oh. Noah? Yeah, oh, no game. I mean, yeah. that's the worst. I mean, God, that's yeah. the worst signing. That's as bad. That's that's Ellsbury times two. <laughs> there's, there's, yeah, there's Noah posted Instagram videos of him in the rainforest with a blonde beard. Like, what are you doing? The that, best season is season is starting. He in a could care. Months. What does he care? I mean, that's it. I mean, oh, and that's that's that. It was a lot of money down the drain. Yeah. But he will give them a chance, where he will give them what they need financially, and he doesn't interfere. So they guys got to get the right guy to run. Now, whether they got the right guy, we'll see. Right. I don't know if he's the right guy or not. We'll see. They got a new hierarchy. Let's see if they make the right decisions. Because uh, Hopefully, looking. you know, in basketball, you got to get in position to get that one guy. Mm -hmm. yeah. The one guy, it's a one guy sport. One guy can keep you good for 10. Look, they got yeah. Patrick here, and listen, they got to the finals twice. They went to the second round every year. Yeah. You know, Against everyone's Jordan. like, oh, you, you, how would you like to have you again? 55 oh, wins oh, every man. year. Mm -hmm. I'll take him right now. Right. 23 and 10, 55, 60 wins, second round every year. Mm -hmm. Some years the finals, some years the conference finals. All right, didn't win a championship. They should have won the championship in Houston. Yeah. I was there, game six, they're up, okay. Oakley up one, throws the ball down the court trying to make a basket and throws it out of bounds. So the ball comes back here and Houston scores. <sighs> Stocks couldn't put the ball in the ocean, yeah. okay. And then game seven, it got routed. Yeah. But, you know, the next time they went to the finals, they got the Spurs, they got killed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, listen, they won every year. I went to so many great Knick games those years. The Knicks with Riley, they were the best act in town. They were so big. I would love to see the Garden again yeah. before I retire for good, which next time would be for good. Mm -hmm. I, whenever it is, it would be for good. But I would love to have the Garden back. When it was rocking. With, oh, it was nothing yeah. better. Yeah. Friday night, Ooh. Sunday afternoon. Mm -hmm. You could hear the Garden rocking from 2nd oh, Avenue. Man. I mean, it was unbelievable. They blew the house off. They do the doors off the place. Yeah, it was unbelievable. Speaking of 99. Nothing better than a Garden when it's riled up. Yeah, oh, nothing no, it's better. nothing, nothing. Speaking of 99, that team, uh, you know, the Garden Rocket, when LJ made the four-point play, oh. and that place exploded. Oh. I could have sworn. I was in the Bronx, and I heard that. The Starks dunk? Yeah. Oh, oh man. And yeah. the great games against Reggie Miller. Yeah. The great games against Miami. The great series. The I mean, oh, and all that stuff. Uh, yeah, yeah, Van Gundy hung it on to the foot of the money. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's great Classic stuff. stuff. Great stuff. Is it still fun, radio? Yeah, you know what? Radio... The difference between TV and radio, and I've done a bunch of both. Now, obviously, I've done more radio through the years because I've been in it so long, but radio's fun to do. Mm -hmm. TV, people like being on TV. They like having done TV. TV is not a performer's medium. It's a director's medium. Radio is a performer's medium. It's personal. It's visceral. Yeah. It's, it, you can kind of feel the emotion. You get right into people's minds. It's a great, great, it's the best medium. Yeah. People in radio, when they see you when you do TV, they'll say hello. When they see you when you do radio, 
they think they know you. They right. think they know everything about you. Yeah. They, 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 they think they're your best Just friend. friend. Yeah, Mike, it's so Mike different. you've been my uncle for like 15 they, years. That's yes. it. You know, you're in the car, <laughs> cool. you're in your house, you're mm -hmm. lying in bed, you hear, the, you hear it, it's like you're in your head. It's, it's very intimate it's, nice. and it's very personal. Mm -hmm. Nothing better than radio. Nothing. Nice. Never give up radio. Best wine I don't care how successful you guys are, never give up radio. I will, we will not. You still doing a podcast or no? Absolutely. Still doing a podcast. Okay. Never, never podcast. stop. Are you still at Stu Leonard's? Still uh, shopping at Stu Leonard's? How's, what's the wine selection like? I've never even been in a Stu Leonard's. What? What? Where, where, I live in Long Island. Where, there's no Stu Leonard's on Long Island. That was a, that's like one of the urban legends that you no. brought up in Stu Leonard's. I've never been in Stu Leonard's. You, you, know what's, you, know, you know what's another crazy urban legend right. that I pulled out my ass the other right. day on the show? Uh, I was listening to your show one day and you were talking about Captain Kangaroo and Mr. Rogers being Navy SEALs. And I remember that and I was like, and I brought her up on the show, I was like, I bet you don't know this, but Mr. Rogers was a Navy SEAL sniper. You know what I'm saying? And Mr. I never, Rogers. Like, yeah, Mr. Rogers. Yeah, yeah, not Captain Kangaroo, Mr. Yeah, Rogers, Mr. yes. Rogers, yeah. yeah, that was one of those urban legends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I, I heard it on your show and that's I was true. like, that's true. true. I was like, yeah. I heard it on Mike. I heard it on Mike, it's true. That's right. What would you like your rainbow to say? Do they inform you of the rainbow? Yes. So tell me about, tell me what, how, how this started, the rainbow. Tell me how this started. Uh, we used to give out rocks that were decorated to the right. guests. To match the guests out, or whatever. But then that was too, too much time. Yeah, right. too much now time. So like, now it's like. The advertisement. Whatever you would like, in, like to enlighten the world if with. If you want to enlighten any young broadcasters Here's out the there. one thing I would say, okay? And I've said this since I was a little kid, and I always believed this. I remember having a paper out when I was nine years old, going up to all these big houses. You have to go up and collect every week. I was delivered Newsday. Yeah. I say, man, someday I'm going to have a house like this. I used to, you know, say, Oh, someday I'm gonna have a call like that. Right. Dream it and do it. If you believe it, you can do it. And I and I believe that. There's nothing getting your way. Don't let anybody stop you. Don't mm -hmm. anybody step on your dreams. If you really passionately believe it, you can get it done. My friend says I didn't tell the Pope. The Pope himself. I work for a wise Thank man. Thank you guys. Hey. Thank you. You're watching the DC Romero YouTube channel, stupid. Click to watch more videos and clips. Subscribe, please, please, please. Click and comment.